everyone, welcome. Siemanko, actually. I'm using this as my catchphrase. It's Polish howdy, something like that. So it's, well, uh, I'm Alex Baranowski, and I would like to welcome you to my presentation about SCA and update info. Uh, this is actually my first presentation in life when I have notes, because in most cases, I'm making something what in Poland we will uh, name great improvisation. And I'm quite good at it, so this is quite new for me. Uh, when it comes to my presentation, well, the slides are so basic that Microsoft called me to give them visuals, so haha. <laughs> okay, let me introduce myself. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm engineer, and I would like to call myself a system engineer. Uh, I'm trying but anything higher, you know, company politics and things I get. Uh, I'm working at Aurolinux, but right now a lot of my work is connected with uh, Polish National Center. It's center actually, but everyone says center for research and development, and it's connected with European Union funds. And we are making the open source project risk analysis. Um, okay, um, before I start, I would also would like to thank to everyone from Red Cat and Fedora to allow me to be here. Uh, I hope that I won't disappoint you. Spoiler alert, I might a little bit, but I hope not. <laughs> okay, about the presentation, well, we will start with very basic concepts because I, you know, I like to make it that way. When we go uh, to the update info and that it may be the poor man's uh, SCA, then we will talk about a little bit about the supply chain. Uh, there will be also a small, uh, part about a few things that you can do actually with update info. Okay, so let's get started. So, yeah, there is a software composition analyst that um, most of people will call SCA, uh, and it's the analysis of software and its composition, and it's like Dodge, wow, analysis, it's so, it's so smart. And the software part is very obvious, you know, it can be like remote pilot, you know, software on some kind of real time operating system. Uh, but in kind of a composition, we can think about it uh, on the different level. Uh, because, for example, we can think about the dependencies. We can think about the ecosystem. Uh, documentation repositories, mirroring system, for example, and things I like get. And this is my view on the CA. And when we are making the risk analysis for open source project, we actually are doing that way. We first look into the project itself. For example, kernel is written in C, Rust, and things like get, And how it's made, if it gets through some conventions, things like get. Uh, there might be, but actually things like linters that we are using. Uh, we, are, we are looking into the code mostly. Uh, sometimes we can make some analysis on the tests, but not like the unit test, but more for like performance, things like get. if there are some kind of these things. Uh, there also might be like the, not static, but the dynamic, uh, dynamic analysis. So you have to run the software, and you have all types of trackers, profilers, tracers, uh, or you can run some tool chains, like Codacy or SonarCube, actually, that will give you very nice grade for the projects. When there are the dependencies, and of course, when you are making for the whole system, uh, and a lot of open source projects is like, the depths are also the projects, but uh, they have their own uh, grading and things like get. Uh, and it. Uh, and each ecosystem actually manages the dependency on its own. Some are better, some are worse. I will have the one slide actually about the NPM about it. Uh, and this is where the most of the SCA is happening, especially the security SCA, because you have your own application, and this application uh, had a lot of depths, like every not true application available a lot of depths, and the, most of the security scanners or whatever you will name it, will actually look if the dependencies are okay, but most of them won't even look into your application. So this is quite, in my opinion, funny, but okay. And then you have the ecosystem, and in terms of the ecosystem, you have to think about things like the licenses, because, for example, if you are using a GPU version three components. Well, or if you're using any kind of license, that is like the virus license. So 
you have a proprietary software or same proprietary software and how you will manage that. And the ecosystem in many cases is not about the technical point of view. It can be about the legal. It can be about the documentation, support, and things they get. Uh, the more standard view on the SCA is that it's written from the one paper you can read, but it's a very short paper. Um, I won't provide the link to, you know, there's some kind of hub when you can read a lot of uh, scientific papers, and you can actually get it there. Uh, and it's like technical, and they are thinking about the risk, but with integration risk, security risk, development risk, legal, and it's mostly about the licenses. Support, but if there is documentation, if, and if there is like real support, and management, and there's a version control, but when we think about the version control, we have to think about not like a Git, but more like the tags in Git, you know, like this releases uh, in that case. And this is actually a funny thing, because if you go to the SCA on Wikipedia, uh, they are using this paper as the reference in the paragraph. And they actually are splitting the, techni the technical to the development integration, and they put the security separate. And it's also quite popular, believe, to do that way. Okay, so this is like the SCA. Uh, now we go to the next term, is bill of materials. And it's not the, it didn't come from software. This is like the pattern for some ball, point, pen. And you think about it, you can take the pen from your pocket and think, wow, there's the plastic housing, for example. But you can think that, well, this plastic housing is the ABS type, I don't know, 550, that is made with this and this. When you think about the ball pen, there is this little ball, and this ball has to be made from this and this steel. There is, of course, some legend that the Chinese were able to copy this ball for a very long time because it required quite a um, great manufacturing process. Uh, but bomb is not everything. For example, there is a huge argue if NASA is a, would be able to produce uh, if the Rocketdyne F1 engines that were used on the Saturn. In theory, you have the blueprints, you have like everything, but the, especially the, if there is the very quick development, there are the people who have this very specific knowledge and they can <laughs> adapt the blueprint and things they get. So the bomb is, in most cases, it's very helpful, but it might be not enough actually to create the product. And when it comes to the bomb, we have, of course, the software bill of material, and, well, it comes from the normal. And let's think about that. You can say, for example, that our application is need to run web server. Then you can say that it's running Apache web server, but it's different from other, because and then you can say that it's running Apache 2.4.420 L8. And then you can say that we're running, and it was compiled that way with that flags and with that configure, and so on and so on. Uh, software bill of material also allow us to establish relationship. It actually should be together. Uh, so the dependencies, how the build process uh, work, uh, and also shipping, and uh, shipping should include the crypto sign. The S bomb is required for reproducibility. When it comes to the reproducibility, it's a very long topic. Of course, everyone would love to be one to one binary because it's the best. Actually, if you can get like one to one binary, you are at home. Actually, you have a, a sheriff from Rock Linux who is making the shim reviews. Uh, and secure boot stuff. I also did some of this, and you need to have one-to-one -one reproducible binary at the end. So your S-bomb must be perfect. And to do that, it's actually, it uses container to do that. Okay, the next topic is CVS, CVSS, and CPE. And it's actually a little bit funny because a lot of people are talking, for example, about the CVSS. Give me the CVS score. You know, we are using the IS infrastructure and things like that. So, uh, even if it's abbreviation, a lot of people add some word, but it's in the abbreviation just add context. So, a lot of people are talking about CVS scoring and the scoring system. 
So it's like obvious. And anyone who is interested a little bit in security knows that CVE has common vulnerability and exposure. And to put it very short, it's just a number. Uh, I had some idea that will say what kind of uh, uh, exposure or vulnerability it is. Uh, and it has a lot of data on it. Uh, the CVSS uh, scoring system, there is the new version in preview right now. You can go and check it. Uh, and it's part of standard CVE. Only the very, very, very new uh, CVEs don't have this because it might require some time to make the proper analysis. Uh, the CPE is a common platform enumeration, and in theory, uh, the uh, common platform enumeration, uh, each CP, CV have a common platform enumeration it should allow you to search if your software is vulnerable. But this is the theory because it's a little bit complicated. Uh, and I will give you the two examples. Both are Node.js, but Node.js when it comes to the security is so good that it's a very good example in many places. And you have a CV, normally if you have a CVE, it would like the, you have the A or S or whatever, or operating system, whatever, then you have the organization and the project. And you, if you are looking for the Node.js, you will probably look for Node.js, Node.js. Uh, but you have a different CP because of a different product, because this product is bundled into the Node.js RPM package, or in most cases, any package, because it's very uh, like needed. Uh, the other one is errata for CRS. This CRS is also bundled. And you might think that, oh, I don't have all my CVs for CPEs are OK. But no, sorry, guys. It's not that simple. Sometimes if you are using something, then you have to make like, this reverse dependency build and things like that. So it's a little bit more complicated than this. OK? Uh, oh, uh, it's duplicate, sir. And it's even more complex uh, because, sorry for making the small font in the point, but this part does not matter that much. Uh, like three days ago, I was looking to Fedora body system. And the body system have a very nice interface. And this interface will tell you about the security update and things like that. Uh, so there was like seven for Fedora 37. Uh, the, following, the following CVS were fixed. And there is actually the good examples because we have the one security update that does not ship CVS. I will tell you a bit why it happened later on the next slide, actually. We have the ZenBridge that is actually CVS fixed, but it, in internal federal system, when you have a CVS, it will show bugs fixed. And this one, well, they didn't have that because someone didn't click or uh, give enough information to the system. And we have uh, one CV that was in triage. So everyone knows, yeah, there is something. But we have to assess it uh, a little bit more. So there is a huge problem of CV uh, not found. And uh, the Daniel Stenberg, that is the author of the main developer of CURL, that is like the most used software in the world, probably, regulatory guys, uh, made very good article about why this is not the bad thing that, way, that the CURL have more CVEs. It's actually expected. It's a good thing. Uh, but I can say that we are part of the problem. Why? Uh, I said I'm working right now and risk assessment project for the European Union and the scoring goes down. Someone have a CV, scoring goes down because you can only score if someone, you know, provide the data and a lot of projects actually won't provide the data. Why? Because it's easier to just fix. You know, system D actually had like this awards for the worst vendor or something like that. Uh, it was the critical one, CV. Uh, Vulnerability, but how to root access, and there was the, well, be quarrel, let's name it that way. Uh, and before they get the CV, uh, it was over, it was fixed, it was simple fix. Uh, 
And in cases of many projects, you have to get this common platform enumeration before you get the uh, exposure information. You can put it, and I get the common platform for our systems. And of course, in the end, it's like sending the simple email to that and that address, and after some time, they will add it to the database. Uh, but reading through the government documentation might be a little bit challenging. Uh, so, then speaking with OCV, there's no reputation hit in most cases. And it's easier to maintain. Yeah, this is a big thing. Because I was working, uh, I am working with a lot of clients and organizations and companies that actually sometimes don't want the update, like in most cases, don't want to update the system. Everyone is overstaffed, overbooked, and things like that. So if there is no CV, they don't have to. But if there is, they're required by law to do that, to make a fix. And depending on where you live and what is the law and what is your uh, institution doing, it might be, for example, only 30 days. And you, for example, have to ship the golden images to all your systems in a few clouds. Uh, and some of them are very legacy and you have to update them because you are required by law to actually do that. But if vendor somehow, magically it might happen, forget, then, well, the next update will be the next update. And there's the NDA, and it happened to the one of the company, um, in Poland we are making the fushkas, so the little jobs, uh, and one of the company, like not the ruin of them, something like that, but some startup from Poland actually uh, hit that. They put the image in the marketplace of the one of the cloud provider, and this image had the critical, like user critical, root access, vulnerability. And the first thing that happened, NDA. And you cannot inform your customers about it. You cannot make blog posts about update your images. No. Why? Because these images in most of these marketplaces are, um, before we get to the marketplace, they are review. And there's automatic review and there's manual review and things like that. And it just looks very bad for the comp companies. So, yeah. So, it's quite a complicated topic when you think about it. The next thing I would like to say is that we can be only as good as the database that we are using. And there is very good uh, paper of comparative study of vulnerabilities reporting by software composition as a tools uh, by some North Carolina State University researchers. I'm sorry that I didn't put the names, but I will just kill the surnames and names, so I believe that it's more respectful that way. Uh, yeah, and the most important thing that they get there is that SEA can be only as good uh, as the database that is underlying this software. Also, they find out that uh, a lot of tools just believe the user dependencies. But the good ones are actually pulling them and check. Because, for example, if you are using the Python or Go or whatever, and you just want to make the, use some framework, you can put in your Go modules or your uh, requirements of Python, for example, Flask in Python. And you said, but this is facts, I don't know, 808. And then you install it, and we'll get a lot of dependencies. And a lot of this, uh, uh, SCA tools actually won't do that. They are like, they're very dumb, they will look into what you have, and they will just believe you. Even if you have, uh, for example, the older version of something might pull the dependency that is vulnerable. Okay, going back to Fedora RPM ecosystem, okay? When you think about it, RPM database is de facto software, uh, software bill of material. Uh, the database of vulnerabilities is stored in the update info files. I will have a little bit later uh, more about the info. YUM and DNF is not trivial as it might seem to be security scanner. And the thing that I like the most is if there is the report there is the fix available. So it's very natural for people and a system administration, DevOps, 
whatever, just to use the Yum security. And when you think about it, the security package manager has a security option. Then it will ever have a power of update info. Updates have the categories. So do you want to enhance your system? Oh, guys, we have the bug fix. It might be interesting, but you can skip that. Or you have a security update that you might be required to install. Um, OK. <laughs> uh, OK. The, and the security update have impact. Because if the impact is low, you might be not required to update it at all. But if it's critical, then, you know, alarm. You have to update as soon as possible. And there are links to CVE, so you can actually read them and assess. Because the new scoring system uh, actually uses things that is called temporal metrics and environmental metrics, things like it. So the security officer in your company can say that, well, in theory, this is the critical. But in practice, after our own assessment to our environment, we know that this is low. So it's quite important that you can get this information. And there is even more goodies. You have a version working. Yeah, I'm not fun of it, but you can do that. And that you won't get the information. You might execute some packages. Yeah, and you can get this package from this repository and this package from this repository. And there is actually an update info is something that is called reset required. I have no idea if it's working, to be honest. Uh, there is command that is reset required, but it doesn't look into it. Uh, so, yeah, in theory, it, there is <laughs> this kind of info, but I have no idea if anyone is using it. And when you think about it, shiny new, but not better when it comes to the new way of delivering software. So yeah, snap refresh does not have security. So snaps are always refreshed. And there was proposal for it like more than a year ago, nothing. Flatpak does not have the security. There is even the dedicated website where Flatpak is back, bad. I'm, I won't guarantee that it's correct, okay? And up to date, but there is. Uh, and it's quite a good website because it's very short. Uh, app image is container when you think about it. So good luck with updating the container. You know, if there is like no new version, then there is nothing. And also, no wide open PGP data found on most of the app images. It's like, eh, really, guys? It's not that hard to sign something. So I made another meme that, you know, there's like no security. Uh, and it's important because most of system administrators want to and have to maintain the smallest update possible because you are working not only with your organization, but you are working with vendors, for example, application. And they say, this will work if the libc URL is this and this. And if you update it, like, and something happened, we're like, oh, sorry, guys, you have to pay us money to fix that. It looks like this. Sorry, it's true. OK, so let's go to the update info once more. Uh, it might be a little bit bigger. So it's like updates on the top level, and inside there is the update. Uh, I will go to the update, and let's go. So it's the simple XML. And in update info, this update actually looks a little bit like this. I compacted it as much as I can. The important part is like you have the type. So as I said, enhancements, security, bug fixes. You have the ID. Uh, you have the severity. You have the references. This is extremely important part, references. Uh, and you have the packages list. There is the collection, and, but you can skip this collection. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter, actually. Uh, so, when you think about the references type, it can be like CVE, uh, bugzilla, vendor, over unknown. Uh, but if you look inside the code, it's actually managed by Hauke, or Hauke, I have no idea how to say the name of the library, and Ripso. And Ripso actually accepts anything, and Hauke actually makes these types of, so if you want to, for example, have your own type, it's quite easy. 
Um, I would say, but even very easy. There is the error time importance, as I said, uh, and it can easily be mapped to the CVA because the CVA scoring has this brackets like uh, low, medium, high, critical. Uh, there's actually none, but if there's like the CVA that is known, let me know. I never saw anything like it. Uh, uh, so yeah, you can map it, and it's simple. Uh, there are some challenges. As said before, uh, the database is very important, so it requires effort from vendor and developers. Uh, there is no official standard. You have to look into the code. Of course, just copy Fedora, Red Hat, or whatever. It will work. Uh, there is the problem that some packages are provided a large number of packages, actually. Like Node.js is one of these examples. Uh, and there's a lot of embedded. Uh, and there's also the problem with source packages. Because after the compilation, there are packages that are used blobs, jams, sub packages. Uh, so you start the compilation, for example, that will compile some Python, because that requires some Python. We're going to 0.7 in row 9. Uh, and after the build, it discarded. But when you think about it, uh, in SBOM and things like that, uh, it should be included because it's build dependency. So if you want to have a full SBOM and real, and to make the like, real analysis, you have to know that. And with jams, I get that sometimes you need some kind of rabbit jam that might be proprietary just for compilation so you can discard them after. And it's illegal. But still, it's quite a gray area when it comes to the analysis. Uh, and this is my favorite one. Uh, this is the paper, not all dependencies are equal, an empirical study on production of NPM. And there is funding. First one, out of 100 projects that we choose for this study, only 51 have like the production dependencies. And from this, uh, 39, sorry. And from 39, production dependency present less than 1%. Less than 1% of dependencies. It's whoa. Yeah, wow, thank you. <laughs> and why I'm saying that? Because when you think about the RPM database and the RS scanner, RPM database is very strict. If you install something, for example, I want to install MariaDB, it will tell me which dependencies, and if I ask about what I have in my system, I will get the cool information about it. Uh, the dependencies are handled by mature software, uh, and very explicit. In most cases, I said there's some build dependency things they get. Uh, it's production used since, well, forever. Probably like row six or even five, something like that, so forever. Uh, and to sum it up, yeah, like in OSCA, the update info actually is as good as the underlying database. Oof. So if you will get something from this whole presentation, it's like the first point, that you can treat RPM database as SBOM, we actually are doing that. We have updates for as vulnerability database and then NF as a scanner plus updater. And it's like the full blown SCA stack. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the sub chain. And the definition is a little bit blur, so I will just make a few points. It's which component are used, uh, what are the relationship between them, for example, if it's the build or shipping relationship or if something is needed, we have that in RPM, by the way. Who committed? So, you know, how you get the source code and much, 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 much more. And the thing that a lot of people don't know that it must have. You have this Moscow model. I know that word Moscow is not the most popular right now, but the Moscow model is must have, should have, could have, and won't have this time. But at the moment, the as bomb are must have. There is presidential order in the uh, US that actually will force everyone. 
And sorry, guys, if you want to use software in the US, that is the biggest market in the world, by the way, we will have to. It's not like, well, maybe we'll implement it. No, it's must have. Uh, OK, so one of the supply chain like standard is salsa. I like it, you know, my salsa, I mean, I things I like get, I have very good like, visualization of it. And it provides the build levels uh, at the moment. And this build level, like, where it's known, you can say how you are making things. So it's probably showing how package was built, where's the signed, generated, but hosted build platform, whatever the hosted build platform means, by the way. They have very good dictionary about uh, a lot of things in salsa, but hosted bit platform is actually not one of them. Uh, and the level three is that this platform is hardened. And well, I will say that I was looking into the salsa before version 1.0. So yeah, some time ago. Uh, and version 1.0 is a joke. It's a joke, guys, it's a joke, sorry. Uh, why, because concepts are like source requirements Hermetic build, so reproducibility. And common requirements, discard it. It, it came from open source, but they made it for everyone to the point that no one would be happy with it, in my opinion at least. And the current state of Salsa also looks like an advertisement for the build platform, sorry. We have like four build platforms and the only one is one you can host yourself, and it won't get you the highest level, by the way. And some requirements like the build cannot be tempered, or the, the signing cannot be user-defined step. So who can define the signing? It's like, oh, I'm not user of that system, I'm not compiling here. You know, language barrier, maybe in my case, but well, it's, for me it's a joke. Sorry. The other standards that are actually used is SPDX, uh, Cyclondex, a suite. Uh, probably I should name it suite, something like it. Uh, and two of them are actually standards also in the European Union. So you can use them. Uh, where is the paper? Uh, like S-Bone Server from 2021. Mm, where is the small, like, the source of that information. Uh, yeah, so we can use that standard, and when it comes to the SPDX, it's actually available for some parts of Red Hat right now. It's beta, I know that, but you can get it from containers, some, uh, some containers and some software, of course. Okay, the important thing that I would like you to know, that Update info is ready for SBOM. Because someone was smart, by the way. <laughs> there is, you, because there is like over. You don't, it don't have to be reference, don't have to be like CVA or Bugzilla. It can be anything. Nothing stops the update info to have the reference to software bill of material. It does like So when it comes to the RPM world, you are more than prepared. Everything is ready. But we are not producing the good S-bombs, but I will tell you about it a little bit later. Okay, so what you can do with update info? We are going to the end of presentation, shall we? Uh, one other thing that you can do with update info is review. I'm actually, for that, I have an abstract that I would like to show some new toings that we are working on, but a thing happened some changes for some freeloaders, or whatever you will name some companies, like one of I'm working for, so yeah. I had a lot of things to do in my life during that time. Uh, some of them pleasant, some of them known. Uh, right now I have also very big problem with motivation because of that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I will provide it later, I promise. Uh, and one thing that you can do is re review. Scientific Linux have a review very, it's very nice, but it's an old format. Uh, it's not suitable right now. Uh, the search engines won't actually use it. Uh, the other thing is the simple scanners. This is a very small part of one of the projects I'm doing. Uh, 
I cannot show it because I'm required not to show it by the way. Uh, but we will before we ship it. Uh, so yeah, so you can have like your RPM with like never actually. So it's it's quite the same information, uh, and you just can erase your CVS in your system. Uh, you have have a triggers, and this actually is something that we are already have working in that project. Uh, and you make the simple query on update info and simple query on the system to save that query. Uh, you know, this is like RPM minus query all minus format name, uh, probably some sign because, well, we, you might have the different vendors from uh, with the same names and things like that. So, so uh, crypto sign is actually the best when it comes to determining the packages. We, uh, we, we manage a lot of Frankenstein systems that are part RHEL, part Oracle, part Linux, and things like that. So yeah, so we are doing that way. Uh, it can be used to reboot images. Because normally you have to spin, for example, virtual machine or container or whatever, but it takes time. You, in many cases, you don't have access because the, the people who build the <laughs> golden image, images for your organization may be in the different department but for example, the security. Uh, and things they get, so they just have to give them a the very simple text file. Uh, and it's especially useful for golden images, so type of images that are used across the organization or standard. Also, you can make a Rata portal. And Red Hat has a very nice Rata portal. Uh, Alma has, Rocky has. So, yeah, and all of them are actually using update info. So, yeah. And when it comes to the future and my dreams, uh, I will provide this Rata new generation by way of what we have. And sometimes, as I said, motivation is quite low at the moment. Uh, I would love to have the RPM tag with CPA. You know, it would be so great because then you can just ask the RPM database, then you can just some CVS search software, and you can get, you know, all the information like this. Uh, but it's not possible because adding the Tax to RPM is not that simple. Actually, RPM 5, but it's not used, by the way, uh, could have custom tags. RPM 4 does not, but maybe we can use the provides and then CPA, and this provides actually uh, should be good enough. Uh, and the current build system at Kodi, for example. Uh, I will use Kodi. I know that there is a lot of new build systems. Some of them are good, some of them are worse. Uh, provide simple SBOM. You have this, and most of the system, are, including, are provide installed packages. So if you are making the RPM, uh, you have the information about the installed packages. And this is this uh, software build material during the build process. But it's also important because of this reverse dependency and things they like get. And that you can have this reproducible, quite reproducible environment, build environment. So it's very important. And once more, we are already ahead of everyone because we have them. But they are not as an SBOM format that is like generally accepted. So there need to be a little bit of work done. And we are working on the new boot system. Our current boot system is used by a few companies actually. And the new one will be open sourced. And wow, I set something on fire actually. Oh because our boot system was always source RPM based. We never used the dist, git, or anything like that. Uh, and we always provide the batches. So we have customers who are rebuilding some systems and we just give them batches and we're making that public. Well, 15 minutes actually. It would take 15 minutes to clone. Uh, the longest part will be that you will need a logo for your new system. So yeah, uh, and this is my yeah dreams. And this one is actually founded. We have a founding in our current a grant because we need to create a new build system. By the way, because we need the S bombs, so proper S bombs to the risk analysis. So we have to create the new build system. None of them was good enough. Yeah, so this is like my. 
future ideas, dreams. Sorry, once more, but I didn't provide something that I should, but the world is on fire. So, yeah. <laughs> so it was quite hard to make anything else for me. Uh, okay, this is the end. Any questions? I would love to answer any question that you have. So. Hi. Uh, how do I use it, assuming I'm on Alma Linux? Uh, what, what? How do I use update info? Oh, okay. So every time when you are asking, for example, Alma, you know, said, when yeah. you are asking uh, the repository about the repository that actually looks like this, this, like this URL, and the YUM or DNF will add the slash repo data, slash repo MD, that is metadata, this is like XML file. And update info is one of the entries in that XML file. Then the YUM or DNF and libsolve and libhok and whatever, this whole stack will actually pull that update info for, for you. It will be probably uh, compress it, will decompress it, read it, parse it, things like that, all the magic. Uh, and then it will just print you uh, if you have a security update in your. Uh, in your system. It can be used that way. Uh, it can be used, the most of the admin that I know actually use just DNF minus audio minus minus security. You can also uh, set the level that is required or you can get the uh, security and info so you can, before you update, you can get this information about the CVEs and things like get. So, um, and it's all like very natural for organizations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so okay. thank you very much uh, for, for coming and yeah.